Hey everyone, my name is Rui and we are here for UBL Season 4 and uh, we've been here since Season 1. We were one of the first uh, members to join this league and here we are in Season 4 in the first Sword and Shield season and uh, I'm going to show off our draft because I'm really proud of this draft and I think it's a really interesting team that I put together. Uh, I think they all support each other really, really well and as unfamiliar as I am with this new Sword and Shield meta, uh, I think I have the tools to really um, put together a solid season here. But before I get into anything, uh, I do just want to mention that I went into this draft knowing absolutely nothing about this new meta, right? So I vaguely knew that a lot of mons lost defog and I vaguely knew that um, a lot of mons just lost a lot access to a lot of moves, but other than that, um, I played a little bit of EGC. I got to Master Ball rank really quickly in Season 1 and then got bored with it. And now we're in Season 3. I didn't play at all in Season 2. I still haven't played in Season 3. And that's pretty much my entire battling experience, right? So I went into this meta pretty much not knowing anything other than what I was able to gather just from watching battles and stuff like that. So that's going to inform a decent amount of my picks. That's actually going to be super relevant for a couple of transactions that I will be making. And are going to go into effect after Week 1 ends. So um, with that, I'm just going to get into the first pick. And this is a mod that I was just super excited to try out. With the first pick, I wanted something that could pretty much win games on its own, right? But I was pretty low on the draft board. I was six out of eight in my pool. So a lot of the top tier stuff was gone. And I kind of had to try to figure out what I wanted to do. And I end up picking up Dracovish, right? So Dracovish, I think, is an absolute monster, right? I've been able to see Wolfie use it quite a bit in the WBE. And uh, this draft happened well before any WBE battles were started to get uploaded, but it was kind of in my mind just how much of a monster this is, if, if for nothing else, for Wolfie's VGC content, but it's something that I would be really excited to try out. I think it has fantastic typing. Water Dragon is fantastic. Uh, I believe it's only weak to Fairy and Dragon. Um, all of the other water weaknesses are mitigated here, and it just hits like an absolute monster. Obviously, I'm gonna have to build around this thing because every team I think was gonna max out at maybe one or two checks to this thing, but uh, it will have things that hard wall it, and I'm gonna have to try to figure out ways around that. Um, and this is kind of a mod that I feel really comfortable trying to build around, right? So with that, I think Dracovich is pretty self-explanatory. It's gonna click Fish's friend most of the time, and everything else is going to kind of open the doors for Dracovish in, in the late game. With that, I wanna get into my second pick now. Uh, again, I'm, I'm six out of eight, so it came back to me pretty quickly, and I, I was able to get uh, Cinderace here. Now, Cinderace um, is not going to have its in ability. It's, it's going to be Blaze only. Uh, everything is going to be pre-home. It's a complete pre-home format, right? I think this is a fantastic mod, right? So, obviously, it's really fast. It's Beast 119 speed, and it hits really hard with Pyro Ball, right? But not only that, um, it, it's a fast U-Turner. It can hit hard with a decent amount of coverage. It doesn't have... A few certain types that would be really important to make this thing top top tier but you guys can see here i'm not really spending a whole heck of a lot on my picks so far and for right now it's just a matter of picking up what's what's available and i think right now uh in these in this early going i'm doing a decent job of keeping my points affordable and i think cinderace is a fantastic value so is dracovish for the things that they do i think uh i'm i'm getting away with some fantastic value picks right now and cinderace i think just does a whole heck of a lot i've drafted infernate multiple times in the past and this uh does a lot of what infernate does a little bit better with a much much better speed tier 119 especially in this format is going to be really really useful for me pyro ball is just going to be insane and no flare blitz recoil right uh it's still going to be able to have the fighting coverage with high jump kick it's going to be able to do a lot of similar stuff the things that it does really well i think it will do really really well and with that i'm going to go into my next pick now i really needed a fairy i was talking with josh and vivid color as well as randy hld this was my third pick in the draft and i was basically just like i know that there aren't many fairies in this format what's the best fairy that i can get out here just just tell me and josh told me that he thought that togius was the best fairy in this format again i didn't know much about this format going into it but i was just like okay i, I just scooped up to, to kids without really giving it a whole heck of a lot of thought but um i did find out that obviously it, it doesn't have access to roost but i was surprised by the fact that it does not have defog anymore right um this is a mod that i did not know lost defog at the time that i drafted it yeah it was a mod that i definitely expected it to have defog it unfortunately doesn't i still think it's a fantastic mod right i've used um Tokikis a lot and and honestly i think i've drafted it twice before but i brought it to a lot of matches right and honestly my my all-time favorite Togekiss set is just Scarfed Air Slash. I love this thing to death. I think it hits really, really hard. It can flinch things out in a pinch. It can do a lot of great things that I needed to do. Um, but I 
I see Togekiss as having a lot of utility. I don't just see it like bogged down to defog sets or bogged down to like wish um, wish uh, Roost sets and just keeping it on the board for forever. I see this as an offensive monster. I think I'm going to have to play it that way because of some of the moves that it lost, but I still wholeheartedly believe that Togekiss can shine in this format and I'm excited to see how uh, I end up using this one. And next I have Duraludon, and this was a mon that I, honestly, I was not expecting to get back to me this, this late, um, but in round four, Duraludon was still there. I think it is a really interesting typing. Um, this generation has really brought in some fantastic type new typings like Dragon Steel. Like before this, you would have to play Ubers for for Dialga, I believe. I believe that might have been the only one. And um, there were a, a handful of Water Dragons, but never ones as viable as Dracovish, maybe. Or they were a lot more dependent on stuff like Rain with Kendra and, th and things like that. I, I do double up on Dragons, but I don't really double up on weaknesses because uh, this thing will be neutral. Will take neutral hits to. Um, what Dracovish is weak to, and it's just a fantastic seal type, I feel like. I feel like uh, it's going to hit like a truck. It's going to be able to do a lot of things for me. It's going to have a lot of coverage options. As much as I'm kind of building out a really offensive draft in the way that this is coming out, I think that these collections of mons together were, are going to work really well together, and I think they're going to break for each other, which is going to be really huge. I think the theme for a lot of these picks, especially you know, me kind of picking in the semi-budget area where I'm not like splurging on points for anything huge is that they can all win games on their own if certain conditions are met. It's like certain mons are out of the game and they can break for each other such that one of the others can win in the later game. And with that, I'm going to go into my next pick, which is Silvali. Now, this is much more of a kind of um, utility pick. Obviously, it can be any typing it wants to be, but more importantly, it gives me more momentum options with Parting Shot, and this was going to kind of be the theme of this part of my draft, right? Because I feel like I have a lot of offensive breaking potential, but now I need to kind of have some more pivoting options and a more kind of supporting options. Now, this mod, I absolutely knew that it, that it lost Defog. I did not draft it expecting it to have Defog, I knew 100% that it did not have defog. I just thought that it was going to be a fantastic mod for me regardless. It just gives me a lot of flexibility. And with multi-attack being buffed to hit for 120 stab is going to be really, really strong, I think. As well as, again, parting shot pivoting and a whole heck of a lot of coverage. I think it's going to be really strong for me here. And with that, I'm going to go into Rotomo. And again, just kind of fitting into the theme of more pivoting options. I really am excited to just click Volt Switch on, on this thing all gosh dang day long, but it just has so, oh, so much utility, right? It'll be an electric type that doesn't just get completely walled off by any ground type in the game. It can will o -wisp things. It can do a lot of things for me. This is going to be my first time drafting Rotom Mo, and uh, I have drafted other Rotoms in the past. I have generally enjoyed using using all these Rotoms, but uh, Rotom Mo is going to be a first for me. I've seen it used a lot by other people, and honestly, that that's what has me most excited about it. I see people using it really, really well. I want to give this thing a try and see what whatever it can do for me but again um it's going to be about utility for me just willow wisping things being able to pivot in and out and again not losing to, to just any ground type that that could come in on it and this was another mon that i was honestly not aware uh lost access to defog this was also supposed to be a removal option for me as well but honestly seeing just how scarce removal options are in this generation um makes me feel a little bit less bad about it but with that i'm just going to move on i think uh, here we get Runa Regis, right? So Runa Regis is supposed to be uh, pretty much my main stacking option. It gets access to toxic, or no, regular spikes as well as stealth rocks. I'll just say this is one of the mons that will be leaving the team after week one. I think that Runa Regis is fantastic, but didn't fit my team as well. So honestly, my team did need a little bit more special defense. This is obviously much more of a physical wall here. I thought Runa Regis would tick a lot of boxes for me but I don't think it quite fits my team as well as I need it to, and I don't think it's a mod that I would be comfortable using, but in the moment, I definitely thought that it would be a strong mod. I still do think that it's a strong mod, just not particularly for me or my team, but uh, I think it has a lot of potential. I think it's a really interesting mod, and I would like to use it in the future. Just uh, this had a lot of downsides for me that ultimately I ended up dropping it. And next uh, will be Orbeetle, right? So again, this was done well before any of the WBE battles came coming in, but I did see that Wolfie also has the Orbeetle Dracovish situation. Again, this was something that I talked over with Josh and Randy 
Um, Josh really liked it for the webs option. I didn't know it when I drafted it, but it also can be a super viable Calm Minesweeper. I think this thing is a really, really interesting mod, and just seeing uh, the ways that Wolfie and Joey have been using it, I think, um, kind of opens up a lot of possibilities in my own head for things that I can try to do with it. I am really excited to use this thing. I think it has a lot of potential. I want to be able to use this thing well. I think it's going to be a mon that comes a lot. I think it's going to be a mon that uh, is going to be used in ways that opponents don't expect. But also, my main criteria for a mon in this kind of uh, area of, of the draft was webs was huge for me, right? But also webs plus U-turn, so pivoting and webs and setup options really just kind of hit this mod home for me and again pretty great typing uh stab u-turn even if it's not going to be physically offensive i think it's going to be really helpful chip for me in the longer run and i'm really excited about orbital so with that uh we're getting into the final few picks here's musharda right so again this is a point in the draft where i thought i really need a lot of defense really quickly right and this gives me both physical and special defense depending on however the heck i want to build it but it just gives me so much hp a really strong setup call mind option and uh, a lot of utility right so i really liked musharna as a time this is being recorded this should come out over the weekend but at the time this is being recorded i've already kind of built for, for week one and i really enjoyed trying to build a musharna set i ultimately will not be bringing it to my week one match but i do think that it has a lot of potential here but uh again this is going to be another mod that i ended up dropping i will be dropping ruin regus and musharna but uh for the final pick and I'm gonna get into the transactions right after this, but we do have Drapion, right? So I absolutely needed a dark type. I think this is a really, really strong dark type with a stab knockoff, uh, a lot of mods lost knockoff, and I think this is going to be a really big monster for me. Again, a, lot, um, a decent amount of physical defense, but I really don't want to just lock it into being a physical wall a lot of the time. Uh, it will be toxic spikes. Also, I think it just hits really hard. It has a decent amount of coverage. It's gonna support a lot of what I needed to support. I don't think this is a mod that I'll bring most weeks but um i think it's going to do a lot of things that i needed to do i think for the matches that i do, do bring it to it will play a really big role for me i think in the past um i've kind of been forced to bring this thing as a defensive wall and i don't really like having to play it that way it will be kind of my dark type for the season but i think it's going to do a lot more for me than just that i think it um it's going to be good in its own right yeah as long as i kind of don't get forced into putting it into these defensive sets where it's kind of um, a wasted slot. I think that was my mistake in the past, but I think um, or with this team around it, I think Drapion can really do a lot of things well here. I will be dropping Runarigas as well as Musharna, and instead I will be picking up Claydol and Quagsire, right? So with the Claydol pickup, it does give me uh, a another rocker and a spinner. It will probably have to come every week. Uh, in that capacity, it will be my only removal for the entire season, but I don't necessarily see that as too big of a negative right i still think that clay doll will be able to do what it needs to do best i still do have cinderace court change that's going to be important but also um i think the team that i have put together doesn't really make me weak to rocks all that much right uh, I, I won't be able to pack heavy duty boots a, a bunch of weeks on, on a bunch of mons that are weak to it but also this kind of play style with this team i think is going to encourage me to not have to worry about rocks a whole heck of a lot. And believe me, I know that sounds like famous last words, but um, I think especially with the addition of heavy duty boots, and again, with just how many mods lost access to defog in this generation, I think uh, a lot of people are gonna be in very similar boats. And I think for my team in particular, I'm not going to be as hindered with hazards as I normally would be. As well, I will be picking up Quagsire. I think Quagsire is fantastic. It gives me a lot of support that I needed, right? So uh, toxic support is going to be huge. A lot of mods lost access to toxic and this thing being able to, being able to toxic things is going to be absolutely huge. As well as unaware support, uh, it's gonna prevent mons from trying to set up on me as much. I can curse up, I can hit on either side with Earthquake, Scald, and again, I think it can just sit in front of mons for days. And obviously its only weakness will be grass, but I think, I mean, look at my team. I think my grass switches in are fantastic, right? I have Duraludon or Beetle. I think I have everything that I need to kind of protect Quagsire. And I think Quagsire is going to do a whole lot for my team. And it just gives me an extra rocker as well. Um, it will lock, it, it will um, not lock Claydol into running both rocks and rapid spin so that if I don't want to um, run rocks on Claydol, I don't have to. If Claydol is just coming in as the spin bot, then sure, uh, it can it can run rocks as well. But 
um, it's gonna honestly open open my clay doll up as well to kind of uh, do some things. I mean, I could definitely see clay doll being a calm mind sweeper. I think it's I think it's gonna open clay doll up for some for some creative possibilities. That's going to be the new changes to my team with week two moving forward. But uh, with that, I'm gonna try to keep it there. Um, I've already talked for a decent amount of time. I do want to keep this relatively brief, but that is going to be the New Jersey Borough Bats for this season of the UEL. Let me know what you think the MVP of the season will be. I'm really excited about this. Like I said, we've been here since season one. We've made playoffs every season of the UBL, and I'm really excited about this team. I think I have some fantastic pickups. I really, really uh, think this team can do a lot of things. I like how a lot of these mods interact with each other and a lot of, and how a lot of these mods can support each other. Um, but yeah, once again, with that, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll be once again out.